Hi everyone, happy Tuesday. This is Andy with a painted feather coming at you live on the Chalk Paint 101 page. I'm gonna share this with the Chalk Mineral Paint Enthusiast group. How's it going today? Um, so I am a premier Dixie Belle retailer in Northern California, about an hour north of San Francisco in beautiful wine country in Santa Rosa. Hi, Gina. And I have two locations where you can find Dixie Belle paint locally, and that is at Whistle Stop Antiques, located in Old Railroad Square in Santa Rosa. Been there since 1974 in a super, super cool place. 35 different dealers there, so come see us if you're around. And also out in Sebastopol at Ray's Trading Company, all kinds of salvage and antiques and really cool hardware. Hi, Gina. Hello from Georgia. So as you guys arrive here today, please let me know where you are watching from. I wanna know where everyone is tuning in from. And um, today I have a tutorial for you all about metallics. I love using metallics. And when you see something that has metallic paint on it, it has such an impact and can look so good and so different. And today we'll be working on this little French provincial little side table. And I'll keep it tilted for a second. Hello, Patricia from New Jersey. Hello, Olga from St. Cloud, Florida. Okay, so this little side table, I painted it actually five years ago when I first started painting and I didn't know a darn thing about painting. And so I didn't properly prep it. And now I'm starting to have some issues with it. So I figure, let me turn you up here. Hi, B. Trying not to make this too loud. Okay, hold on a second. Here we go. Okay, so I didn't even paint the top when I originally painted this piece because it was a laminate. It was a... Um, Kind of a formica melamine type of top and it was super slick and i didn't know what to do with it and then it's been sitting in my house for five years now and today i thought well here's the day that i'm going to paint it and so what i've done so far is i put two coats of slick stick on this and if you don't know what slick stick is i'm going to tell you about it so slick stick is a bonding primer basically hi amy and I actually tinted my slick stick. Hi, Peggy, how are you? Um, I tinted this because you can tint it. You can add a little bit of paint to make it not such a transition. Hello from Italy. I'm 69% Italian. I got my 23 and me back. It was actually more than I thought. I got more DNA from my mom than I did from my dad, so, which I figured anyway, but it was good to have a confirmation. Anyway, um, hi, Dora. So. I tinted my slick stick with um, manatee gray because I didn't want there to be such a transition from the color to the color that I'm going to. So you can tint your slick stick. Now the reason to use slick stick is if you have, I'm kind of sideways here, hold on guys, turn a little better. Um, I'm looking very sideways, it's bugging me. Let's go to Italy, Amy, <laughs> let's do it. We'll take a tour, go to Tuscany, have some wine. Um, so slick stick, if you have something that is super slick and you think that the paint's not going to adhere, or if you have something and you find, hi Erin from Louisiana, how are you Erin? Um, if you have something that the paint's not going to adhere to, then you want to use this. And what might that be that you would paint that paint will not adhere to? Um, glass, plastic, super slick surfaces, something that's heavily coated that you're not going to take the coating off of. Um, it says right on here too, PVC, metal, and more. So this was very, very slick, and so my paint is starting to fail. Today we're just gonna do the top, so I'm going to show you how to do that. And I'm doing a really cool um, look today. The look that we're going to do I'm gonna use Stormy Seas, which is a gorgeous color. If you haven't used Stormy Seas by Dixie Belle, um, get this color. It's kind of a, um, I don't know, it's a very mysterious color. It's kind of a bluish, greenish, grayish, just gorgeous tone. So Stormy Seas, 
And then I'm gonna put Steel Magnolia over it because I want to kind of create like a brush dark chrome look. So we're gonna use the combination of these two colors. Um, how much paint did you put in? You know, Amy, I just put a little bit. It doesn't take much to tint um, your, your primer. Just really probably a few drops. So just maybe like a spoonful, okay? Like a teaspoonful. So it just depends on how much um, I, maybe a little bit more because that's a big container and I was painting a huge mid-century modern dresser for somebody and it was a very slick surface. So, and then I, I also did it for this as well. So good thing to do. There is a new boss out. If you guys ha uh, need to use boss, which is if you're going to get bleed through, boss comes in white, clear, and now gray. So if you have something that you're going to paint a different color than white, but you want a good transition from a dark to a different color. The gray is a good solution also. So boss you wanna use if you're getting bleed through, slick stick you want to use if you're going to um, need to cover a, a surface that needs to have adhesion. So if you need to your paint to adhere, you wanna use slick stick. If you want your paint to not bleed, you wanna use boss, okay? So, I'm going to be putting on a coat of Stormy Seas and then I'm going to dry this and then I will show you how I like to apply the Moonshine Metallics and that's gonna be good. And then after that, I'm going to add a new, if we have time, new gilding wax, the zinc color, which is my favorite right now. It's kind of a bluish um, gray and metallic so super pretty and i want to do that on this edge here so let me get you guys pulled in so what will you need now the slick stick i actually saw this on um, one of the chalk paint sites yesterday somebody was saying what do you apply slick, slick stick with it's really hard to say that a lot um, i like to apply it with a really good brush because anything that you put on top of it is only as good as what you did prior. So if you put slick stick on with a brush that is subpar and you get lots of brush strokes, your paint on top of it's not going to look great. So I apply it with my Dixie Belle mini angle brush and it comes out super smooth. After I did that, I got my fine rad pad and I just smoothed out the surface. So just to knock it down. So just to make it nice and smooth, I went over the whole thing. That's about how much effort you have to put into it. And that's gonna knock down anything that's on the surface that would prevent it from being super smooth and nice to touch. Cause I want it to feel really good as well as to look really good. So I did that already. And with Slick Stick, you need to do two coats. So put a coat on, let it sit for two to three hours, put another coat on, let it sit overnight, okay? Don't rush to do it. So kind of one thing a day, like put it on. If you have to use Boss or Slick Stick, don't do what you're going to do after on the same day. At least let it sit overnight, okay? So I've done that. Now, after all that is done, um, I did clean the surface with white lightning cleaner before I applied that too. Um, I have my misting spray bottle. This one has a little bit of paint on it because that's what happens. And I'm going to just mist my brush here. You guys tell me where you're watching from as you jump on. If you're arriving late, thanks for joining. And so I got my brush a little bit damp here. Shake up your paint so it's nice and uh, mixed up, you know, sometimes some things will settle at the bottom. So shake up your paint. And of course this one's gonna be stuck. Okay, hold on, I have, to, I have to get it open here. Okay, sometimes you have to bang it on the ground. You can run it under warm water too if you're by a sink. But if you're outside, you might have to bang it on the ground. So, okay, I'm gonna bring you in here. I have crazy dogs barking in the house. Okay. And, oh, okay, there we go. I'm gonna bring it in so we can see what's going on here. I'm gonna put you right on the surface. You need to see that it's not me, so. Here we go. Let me pull this back so you can see the whole thing. So 
I like to get my brush a little damp, but I also like to spray right on the surface of what I'm painting to kind of lubricate the surface of what I'm painting. So this will go fast. Some of my paint is falling out of the container. And it'll go on nice and smooth. And these angle brushes are great for getting in these little cracks. If you have any questions, you guys can ask me and I will answer. So I'm just gonna do one coat of the Stormy Seas, and then we're going to hit it with our Moonshine Metallics. Now, the thing about the Slick Stick is it does act as a primer too, so I've already got a nice surface on here to paint. And so it's kind of acting as a primer as well as an, an adhesion, a bonding primer so my paint will not come off. Now, if I had not treated this with Slick Stick, after I painted it, it would scratch off super easy. So with those French Provincial dressers, Slick Stick is usually always necessary if it's not a wood veneer, if it's more of a laminate on it. Let's see if you guys are asking me any questions. So nice, even strokes. And if you get any wayward strokes, just smooth it out. If you get any little things on it, wear an apron, you can just wipe it right on there. Okay, so I'm just misting the surface, getting the paint on, and just long strokes. Now that I'm probably getting some on the edge that might be dripping, I'll get around to that. And I'll fix that in a minute because I am going to go around this whole edge too. What are you guys working on right now? Anybody working on a project? Why do you use, hold on, let me see. Why do you spray with water? So the reason I spray with water is because chalk mineral paint is quite thick and this is a water-based formula and when you add the water to it, it helps lubricate the surface so it'll help the paint smooth out. Um, it kind of thins it out a little bit more and it will make for just a really nice surface and nice, even, um, smooth brush strokes. So you won't really see the brush strokes. This is a self-leveling paint, which is nice. But the, the misting spray bottle, if you don't have a misting spray bottle, get yourself one super game changer for this type of paint. Now, other types of paint, you don't want to add water to it. Like there's a new, we have the new silk paint line coming out. And with that one, it's a different base. So you don't want to, you, you can't really add water. It'll, it won't do good things for it. But with this type of paint, you want to add that water just to make for a really nice smooth surface. Now this, I've used this paint a couple times and I've got some little little goobers in there. I'm just moving those off. Okay, so I'm just smoothing this out as I go. Now really anything you do on top of this, you just want to have a nice base for the next coat to go onto. Okay, let's see. Now I'm, now it's not adding. Okay, let's see here. All right. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to ask. If you're a Dixie Bell retailer and you're watching, let me know where you're watching from and tell us what shop you're at and where. Tell us where people can get your paint. Um, like I said, I'm located in Santa Rosa, California and also in Sebastopol, California. If you need to find a local Dixie Bell retailer, then you can click on the link that says find a Dixie Bell retailer right on the Dixie Bell paint page. If you don't have one, then you can click on that link in the description of this video. That is my affiliate link, and you can have Dixie Bell delivered right to your door. And these mini angle brushes, I think they're out. I actually have some in stock if anybody needs any. So let me know. I do free shipping over $50. Okay. So we're almost done with this coat. See how good the coverage is because I had that slick stick on there and I tinted it so it was kind of a closer color. 
it wasn't just the white. Now, if it was just the white, I might see more of the white through here, which is a good reason to tint it. Okay, now I'm gonna go around the edge. This is such a beautiful color. It looks really great paired with vintage duck egg too. Lots of colors, any of the grays. Get the edges here. Get your face right up close to whatever you're painting. Make sure you get all the spots. And I'm gonna have to take my heat gun to this because it's kind of cold out where I'm at here. Okay, I'm gonna come around here and just do this edge. Yep, I've got some drips over here, but that's okay, I'm fixing it. Okay, now I'm just going to look and see if I missed anything on the front here, and then we'll dry it. And then I will show you how I like to apply the Moonshine Metallic. It's going to look so good on this. I did a tutorial on Dixie Belle last night about how to get a driftwood look and I used three different no pain gel stains and that was a really good look. So if you want a tutorial about driftwood looks, you can either go to the Painted Feather by Angie, I have it linked there, or you can go to Dixie Belle Paint and check it out. I've gotten lots of comments about that one, so I think it was a good one. Okay, I'm just smoothing out this paint. It's still quite damp. You don't want to do this if your paint's drying fast because you'll get drag marks. Actually, I'm not going to do it there because that's more dry. So, but let me see if you guys can tell. See how good that looks though? I don't know if you can tell on here. I'm going to move my light, but it's just a really good finish on that. And then we're gonna dry it and then I'm going to add the metallic and it's gonna look really nice. So, okay, set this down and I'm gonna get this. I'm going to just spray my brush with water so that it doesn't dry out and wrap it in a paper towel. I didn't bring a bag out here to put it in. I don't want my nice brush to dry out. Okay, let's get this wet. All right, now let's dry this and then we can get on to adding the, let me put you up a little bit. We'll get on to adding the um, Moonshine Metallic in just a moment here. So let's dry this. Now I just have a Wagner heat gun. Don't hold your heat gun in one spot for too long. Oh, I see one little spot there that The edge is not looking great there, so I fixed that. So we're gonna get this dry enough to where we can put the Moonshine Metallic on. But see how nice that finish is since we added the Stormy Sea, or the um, Slick Stick, and we did it in the gray, I tinted it the gray. So this is one coat coverage and it looks amazing. So I could just leave it like that, which looks pretty darn good, but I want to give the top a really pretty metallic look. So we will do that. Okay. This is looking nice. Just move your, your gun around, the heat gun, just evenly. If you guys have any questions while I'm doing this, feel free to ask. When you get a chance, please go over to the Painted Feather by Angie and like and follow my page. And then when I'm all done with this piece, I still have other things to do on it, I'll post pictures. And I think you get notified when I'm doing lives like this too. So I'm, I'm here on Chalk Paint 101 every Tuesday. All right, 
little bit more. Thanks for hanging in with me. The good thing about the Dixie Bell Chuck Mineral Paint is it dries pretty fast, but it's pretty cold in California today, so taking a little longer. Now, if you're not using slick stick and you're just going over wood with the first or with the paint, you may want to do two coats of the paint before your before your metallic. So, but the coverage looks really good to me on this, so I'm not going to worry about it. We're just going to go straight on with our metallic. If you're arriving late, let me know where you're joining from. Just looking to see what's going on here. Okay. Still a little damp, but not bad. This, um, what we're going to do, the Moonshine Metallic, it just gives it, with in the steel magnolia look, in that color, it really gives it a brushed metal look. And I've used it a couple times and I just love it. So if you're doing anything where you want um, just that kind of rustic look or industrial look, it's good for that. And you can do this all over a piece too. You don't have to just do it on the top, obviously. All right, can you guys see this okay? All right. Happy New Year, everyone, and happy Tuesday. All right, just a touch more. And then we'll be good to go with our Moonshine Metallic. Now, if you want to know if something is dry, run your hand over it. If it still feels cold, there's still moisture in it. But if it doesn't, then you're fine. Then you're good to go. A little bit more back here. And then hopefully we can get the Moonshine Metallic dry enough. It dries really fast um, because I want to show you the zinc um, gilding wax. I'm going to do that on that, this front edge. Okay, I saw a question here. You love stormy seas. Yeah, this is gonna look good with the stormy seas. A little, feels a little cold right here. So it's gonna hit right here and then let's do this thing. Get this edge, I'm not really seeing it, so make sure that's dry. All right, I think we're good. If you hold it in one spot too long, it's gonna bubble up on you, so don't do that. Okay, I'm gonna call that good. So now, here's what I like to do. I'm going to take 
see if there's any questions. I'm gonna take my very fine rad pad and I'm gonna go over this whole thing because I want it nice and smooth. And this is how much effort I'm barely pushing. So this is just going to get off any little wayward hairs or anything that's on here that could affect my beautiful finish. So I do this between coats so that my furniture feels really, really smooth. And you can tell how it looks too. Especially when you want a really nice finish with a metallic. And just long, even strokes back and forth. If you're doing it on wood, do it with the grain. Okay, and then I'm just going to wipe it off. You can use a shop towel or a paper towel to just get any sanding dust off of there. All right, there we go. It's ready to roll. So now, how's it going everybody? Now I am going to use, you guys use these little blue sponges because if you haven't, you should. They're really great. So let me try to get my light a little bit closer and maybe I'll go around the back here so that you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, let's do that. Come around here. Okay. So here's my moonshine metallic. Here is my blue sponge. I could pour this into something to make it easier, but I don't have anything handy here. So I'm just going to open this up. I'm gonna have to bang this one too. Now, if you're gonna open your paint like that, make sure you're not in an area that could get ruined. So I'm on a tarp here. Sometimes it'll pop open on you. Okay, got my paint open. You can run it under hot water, which makes it easy too. So with this blue sponge, you want to get your blue sponge a little damp, okay? So we're just gonna get it a little damp here. That will help the paint glide on the surface of what we're doing. So get your sponge a little damp, and then go into your paint. I'm just gonna dip the edge into my paint. Not too much. So I'm gonna just wipe off a little bit here. And then we're going to pull it across the surface. So here we go. I'm going to start up here because it might gunk up there, but I'm just going to pull it across and you can use your misting spray bottle. This really helps the metallics go on nice and smooth with this brush or with this sponge. See how that's working out? I wonder if you guys can see that. Let me see. I'm going to adjust my light a little bit here. That might help. Okay, so I want a nice even coat on here. So I'm just using my sponge and pulling it around the edge here. Get it down in those grooves. Oh yeah, this is working out. And it kind of pulls off the excess as it glides along the surface here. Okay, so do that. Now I'm gonna go back in with my sponge, get a little bit on, not too much. I'm gonna lubricate the surface. And here we go. Just pull it across. And it's gonna give it that kind of brushed metal look, which is really neat. I kind of like, when I'm doing this finish, I kind of like it to be a little streaky because I want that brushed look. Can you see that? 
I'll bring you guys in closer when I get this whole top done. So just nice even strokes. You can go back over it a little bit before it sets up. And I'll probably be doing two coats on this. So just dip your edge into your sponge. Don't dip it like straight down, just dip the edge because what you're doing is you're putting it on on the edge and pulling it across. And I am putting a little pressure as I'm pulling it across here. So we'll do the first coat and then I'm, it looks like I'm gonna need a second coat, which is okay. But the second coat will look really, really nice. So if you ever have a really hard time getting your metallics to look good, these little sponges work great. I use these sponges a lot for the regular paint as well and for top coats. It gives you just a lot more control. this is translating on camera you guys can see how good this looks pull it across like I said a bit of pressure because that way it, it kind of pulls off extra so you can either spray your sponge or you can spray the surface with the water. It's just regular water in that bottle. This is just a misting spray bottle. Dixie Bell retailers have them. I'm not sure if they're back up on the site. They were. I think they, Dixie Bell may have them now. Okay, a little bit more. This first coat's gonna be a little streaky with the metallic. Now the gemstone mousse, usually one coat, it's so highly pigmented a lot of times you don't need two coats. And I was going to use the gemstone mousse actually, but then I really wanted this brushed metal look. So I changed my plan because I really wanted to have this tone. And the gemstone mousse didn't really have the tone I was looking for to go over this. And I wanted it to be a little bit translucent so that that stormy seas color shows through. See how pretty that is? You've never seen or used those sponges. These sponges are amazing, Gina. You should do that. It's like this special thing. I love these sponges. I also use these sponges too when I'm going over the surface of something that I don't wanna get down like on a bench. If you're just doing the surface of the bench and you don't want to get down in on the interior piece, trim pieces. It just helps you get, get control. Okay, I'm just gonna do the little edge here. Show you that. It just works great. Okay. Yeah, these sponges work really well for top coats too. Okay, see how that looks? I'm gonna bring you in a little closer so maybe you can see it. See how that's looking? Looks very metallic, but you can see the blue through it. I am probably going to do a second coat. Although that looks pretty good. I don't know, let's dry it and see. I'm gonna dry that out with my heat gun and let's see if we need a second coat. Yeah, these Blue sponges are available from Dixie Bell retailers too. Not just something special I use. I'm sorry, moving you a little. There we go. Yeah, it looks good, right? It looks really nice, tied in. This, the base of this little side table is painted with, um, I would say similar to a hurricane gray and then whitewashed. So it looks good with that. I'm probably going to end up painting it a different color though. So maybe next week I'll do that and decide. Maybe I'll just do it stormy seas. We shall see. So 
can see that nice sheen that the metallic gives. Like I said, I'm going to do another coat and see what time we're at. I think we can do one more coat. And then I just want to show you what the zinc um, gilding wax looks like. It's so pretty. This dries really fast, so we're not going to have to let it dry as much as I had to with the stormy seas. It dries faster. Plus, I'm putting just very little product on using that sponge. Does have any questions? How's it going? Let me know where you're watching from. Yeah, this is pretty much dry already. That's how fast the metallic dries. We just get the edge. We'll do one more coat of Moonshine Metallic. See how pretty that is? I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's it's the stormy seas just kicked up a notch, I think. The metallic look. All right, so I'll, I'll do it one more time with the sponge so you can see that. And then we'll play with some gilding wax. And then I will let you be on your way. Okay, I'll turn this off. Okay, the storm or the metallic dries really fast. I've even used the metallics, like two metallics at a time together if you want kind of a fun finish. You can do, I did um, Silver Bullet and Caribbean Blue together to make kind of an icy look. It was super pretty. Okay, you're very new to redoing furniture. Just love how you explain. Thank you, Gina. I started doing furniture five years ago and I didn't know anything. It was a really, really great way to pass my time. I was newly divorced. My kids, when they would spend time with their dad. I would just hang out and paint and watch videos. Really good way to pass the time and then you have something to show for it when you paint something, which is nice. Okay, so. Okay, yeah, the second coat's looking really good. And now I know lots and lots about painting and I do it every day and it's how I make my living, so. Kind of funny. So you never know, Gina, you could be teaching people how to paint someday. All right, there we go. Let's just pull it right across. Nice smooth strokes. Like I said, it's gonna, sh there are going to be you can kind of see lines in this, but to me, it makes it just look like brushed metal. And try to go nice and straight so that it looks uniform. I'm kind of picky. If it starts to gunk up on you, give it a little spritz. There we go. Hi, Dee Dee. How are you? Okay. SoCal in the house. All right, so just pull it across. This is gonna look so good when it's done, especially when I take pictures out in the sunshine. You guys are gonna be like, I need some moonshine metallic. Okay, I spritz it, pull it across. Get it nice and even. It'll look so good. And you get a little workout while you're at it. Just dip into your paint, just dip in on the edge. And there you go. I even flip over the sponge sometimes if I've got too much product on and I'm trying to smooth it out. And like I said, if it starts to gunk up on you, just Add a little water to it. You can sort it out that way. The uh, metallics are a bit fussier to work with than the regular paint, so that's why I've 
I use a sponge. Let me pull this this way because the sunshine's coming in here. Okay, I have, I have a little bit of drag marks here, so I'm just pulling it a little harder, smoothing it out. Almost ready to dry the second coat and then I will be adding the gilding wax and just smoothing out something I see here that's bothering me okay, there we go sometimes you have to get it to do what you want it to do there we go Okay, that is looking good. So let's dry it and then I wanna add, I wanna show you guys the zinc in the gilding wax. That'll look really nice with this. It looks pretty good as it is too. So, okay, I'm gonna dry this. And then we will I'll show you how pretty the gilding wax will look on here. Tilt you down a little bit. There we go. I'm just gonna focus on this front edge and the front here because I'm, that's where I'm going to be using the gilding wax. I want you to be able to see it. Before we are done here today, so. Now on this front edge, I just want to add a little more fun, a little more color, and just make the edge a little different than the rest here. Sorry, sorry, I've got a notification there. So the new gilding waxes come in a lot of really great colors. The color we're going to use today is zinc, which is kind of a bluish silver, I would describe it as. Kind of like the stormy seas with this metallic so but it's it's um, a little bit more pigmented so that'll be a nice little fun element on the front here i'll be doing it around the whole edge and i have to decide how i'm going to apply it i may do it with a brush i may do it with my finger you can apply it with various tools Pretty dry now, that's drying very fast. Okay. So I'm gonna open this gilding wax and then we will get to applying it. So let me find a screwdriver that will work here. Okay, so the gilding wax, let me move this so I can get in here and chat with you guys here. Okay. So, okay, so the gilding wax comes in these little containers. My hand's a little dirty here, it's okay. Um, let me see, my light might be too bright. Ooh, well, let's do that for a second. The gilding wax comes in this little container, 1.3 ounces, bigger than the old gilding wax containers. And you just take off the top, and I don't know if you can see this color here. This is the zinc color really nice color so you can apply it with your finger you can apply it with a brush you can apply it with a sponge I've got a makeup sponge here I've got some uh, makeup brushes and I have a lint-free cloth here so I've got all sorts of things that we can um, apply this with I'm gonna scoot you back a tiny bit and turn my light back on okay Let's see how the light looks here Okay, I want you to be able to see this. So let's start out, let me try it with the, my finger and see how that looks. And then I will try other things too. You gotta work it out. So see this color, I'm just gonna go right here. Now this is a very creamy formula. And so if I put it on my finger, you see, like this isn't gonna, it's not gonna dip out of here. This is 
um, a kind of a, it's a wax, and this is a metallic tone, but it is not liquidy. Okay, so, get a little closer here. So let's see how this looks. Okay, so this is going to deepen the tone as I put it on here. You can do it with your finger, like I said, or you can do it with, actually, let's, let's try the makeup sponge. Oh yeah, that's actually good. Makeup sponge works well. Thought I turned that off. Okay, so this is not, this look that I'm going for is not like a huge, huge, huge impact. It's gonna be like, wow, that looks cool. And you might not necessarily know why it looks so neat, but it's, it's kind of like, I don't know, just a, a shade or two darker, but still metallic, still kind of in the same family. But we'll just give an extra dimension to this edge here. So this is just a, a makeup sponge that I'm putting it on with. You can, like I said, use your finger. You can use a brush. You can use a lint-free cloth. However you want to do it. Just have fun with these products. I really like doing these tutorials because it pushes me to try these products in different ways. Do you have any questions? Hi, Peggy. Okay. So, just smoothing it out and the sponge, the spo sponges give you really good control of these products. Just, and the gilding wax goes pretty far. You just need a little bit of it. See how nice that's looking? We still have this metallic look. Okay, I'll bring you in in a second here. I'm just gonna do this little front edge. I'll go around and do the outer edge off camera, but I just wanted to show you how pretty this color is. Now the gilding wax comes in a copper, a bronze, a black, silver, uh, the zinc, and it comes in three chameleon colors that actually change color depending on the paint that you put them on, and they're incredible. I'll, I'll probably do a tutorial on those too because they're really neat. Just haven't found the right project to do it on yet, but I will be doing it. If, I'm, if I had my face turned away from you and you guys asked a question, I'll circle back and answer after this video. So don't worry if you asked me something and I didn't answer you. I'll get back to you. Okay. See how that looks? I'm going to just pull you in here so you can see how pretty that is. I just love these um, gilding waxes and the way to embellish details. There's just so many ways to do it. So. Isn't that cool? Okay, I'm gonna turn you up here a little bit. Try it, hold on. I've got too many things in my hands. Okay, tilt you up. Maybe. Okay, there we go. All right, so thank you for tuning in today. Isn't that pretty? Well, now I've got you tilted. I'm sorry if I keep moving you guys. Um, there, I need a new system for this. Um, okay, so we did the um, Slick Stick, we did Stormy Seas, we did the Moonshine Metallic, and then we did this front edge in the gemstone, or in the um, gilding wax. So isn't that pretty, Kathy? Isn't that nice? So yeah, just let your imagination run wild with these products and, and go for it and have fun with it. So um, I'm here every Tuesday on Chalk Paint 101. If you don't follow me already, go to the Painted Feather by Angie and like and follow my page. And um, I, will, I will post pictures of this when I'm all done. Uh, thank you, Dee Dee. And isn't that pretty? These colors are really good together. Give me a heart if you like my 
project. I think it turned out pretty good. Um, I will be painting the rest of this too. And um, if you need to find a Dixie Belle retailer, go to DixieBellePaint.com and click on the thing that says um, find a local retailer. If you need some stuff, I've got all kinds of stuff. I ship free with $50 or more. And you can click on that link that says buy Dixie Belle paint here in the description of this video. Thank you guys for the hearts. Thank you, Gina. Thanks for watching everybody. And I'll be back next Tuesday and hope you all have a great rest of your day. All right. Yeah. Zinc is good, right B? Good stuff. All right, everyone. Have a great one. Bye. Thank you.